Perceptual cognitive skills are reported to be crucial factors for soccer players. Furthermore, the literature on the occlusion paradigm suggests that perceptual cognitive skills might be highly relevant for talent identification. Talent identification aims to recognize players in sports who will be successful in the future. Literature has shown that this talent is something that does not remain stable and evolves with experience or expertise. Consequentially, the use of physiological measures such as height or sprint speed for TID might be affected by improper judgment. 14 youth soccer players playing in the U12 or U13 team, mean age 12.2 years, for an elite youth academy in the Netherlands participated in the study. The self-reported mean age 12.2 years. Their self-reported soccer experience was 6.8 years and experience at an elite youth academy 3.6 years. Coaches associated with the club but independent from the players were asked to watch and rank the players for game insight. This minimized the prior knowledge the coaches had about the players. All coaches were qualified trainers working with elite level players. Video cameras recorded the clips for the GID, the regular games, and the small-sided games. An artificial turf mat was placed on the floor in front of the screen, enabling the players to wear their regular soccer shoes. The participants' positions were recorded using a Microsoft Xbox 360 Kinect sensor with coordinates saved on a laptop. The Kinect has been validated for large body movements. All measurements were performed in one of the change rooms within the club's facilities. GID footages were recordings of a position game played on an 18.3 by 18.3 M field by four versus four peer aged players with additional two wild card players. Both wild card players were lined up on opposite sidelines, returning the ball to the team originally playing the ball. This created a 6 versus 4 advantage for the team in ball possession. Four games of five minutes each were recorded by two cameras positioned on a wildcard sideline. Video clips were eligible for the GID if the ball was played in the general direction of one of the cameras, without any obstruction by a player. Based on previous research, three different occlusion types were specified. Clip occludes 80 ms before football contact, minus 80 milliseconds. Clip occludes at football contact, Clip occludes 80 ms after football contact, plus 80 milliseconds. Participants self-reported anthropometrics, height and weight, soccer experience, at the current and previous clubs, time participating in other sports, and time spent playing outdoors. The questionnaire consisted of the following questions. Rating Game Insight Abilities Participants were involved in 5-6 minutes small-sided games with 2 minutes breaks between the games. Small-sided games are shown to replicate situations and skill requirements of regular match play. Thereby, varying the pitch size or amount of players can provide different training responses for physical, physiological, or perceptual loads. For instance, reducing the number of players results in a significant increase of ball contacts and tactical decisions performed by a single player. The current study uses the small-sided games design 4 vs 4 with 5-6 minutes small-sided games and 2 minutes breaks in between, as it was part of the training to increase physiological demands. For both the U12 and U13 teams, Four independent coaches viewed the video of the five small-sided games and separately ranked the players. In total, eight coaches ranked the players according to their game insight abilities. The definition used for game insight is to act appropriately with the given situation. Coaches gave participants a score on a scale from 1 to 3, 1 for performing best and 3 for performing worst. All coaches judged every player in their allocated age group at least twice, with a maximum of four times. All participants were ranked ten times. The participants rated a 170% or more were placed in the highly talented group. The participants rated a 130% or less were placed in the less talented group. This rating was used as the gold standard of game insight in this study. 
Accordingly, the performance of participants on the GID and for other variables was analyzed when comparing the highly and less talented group. Video Occlusion Task The GID consisted of 60 occlusion clips, proportionally distributed for three occlusion conditions. The task required participants to anticipate the trajectory of the oncoming ball when visual information was occluded. Before the task, the participants received a brief explanation about the experimental setup and instructions regarding the GID. In each trial, the ball was played toward the participant or to their left or right. Game Performance Game performance was analyzed during small-sided games and regular games. The same footage in which the coaches viewed and ranked the players for game insight was used for analyzing the game performance. Footage of regular competition games was acquired during regular games, which were held in accordance with the Royal Dutch Soccer Association rules on a 60 by 100 meters field. The first 30 minutes of each half was analyzed independently by two notation analysts. Any additional time was excluded from the analysis. The table consists of all variables and the definitions for which the players were rated. The mean percentage of the sum of successful actions was used as an indicator for game performance. Whether the pass, pass reception, or interception was successful depended on the outcome. An action was deemed successful if the team remained in possession or regained possession from the opponent. Results Coach Rating the highly talented group consisted of five players rated a 170% or more. The less talented group consisted of eight players WHO were rated a 130% or less. The overview per coach and player is found in the table. A significant difference was found for the ratings of the players across the highly talented group and low talented group. Also, Significant differences were detected in the game performance for both the 4 vs 4 and the 11 vs 11 games between the high talented group and the low talented group. The group, high talented vs low talented, times occlusion, minus 80 vs 0 vs plus 80, testing was carried out. For the main factor of the group, no significant effect was found. The main effect of occlusion was significant, whereas the analysis revealed a significant interaction between group and occlusion. Seven years after the original measures, nine of the 14 players still played soccer at a high level, that is in the first league for their age. The playing levels of the participants, mean age of 19 years, are reported in the table. Three out of the six original height players were playing at the highest level, one, one was performing at the third best level, three, one at the fourth best level, four, and one player, unfortunately, had to quit soccer due to reasons other than his soccer skills and was therefore excluded for further analysis. Five of the seven players, originally classified as low talented players by the coaches, also played at the highest level. Additional analysis found no significant effect on the main factor group between sub-elite and elite players.